Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neese from Torah Life Ministries. We are continuing to read the scriptures live, and uh, we are up to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. We're going to open up with the Shema here in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ikad, Baruch Shem Kivo, Mahutov, Leolam Vahed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Amen. Amen. All right. We are up to chapter 32 of the book of Jeremiah, and we're continuing this chapter from like chapter 30 to 33. It's, just, it's, it's, it's at a different time. Uh, and, and yesterday for Jeremiah than he was in the past, and he's talking about the encouragement for, uh, for, for, uh, for the people. So we had in 2911, it said, you know, the, about the future and a hope. And then we talk about the new covenant. And here we are in chapter 32. And we could start off by reading here uh, the, uh, the, the opening uh, statements here or the notes. It says, Yahweh told Jeremiah to buy a field outside Jerusalem. The city had been under siege for a year. And Jeremiah bought land that the soldiers occupied. Certainly a poor investment. In addition, Jeremiah was a prisoner in the palace. But Jeremiah was demonstrating his faith in Yahweh's promises to bring his people back and rebuild Jerusalem. And then verse 1 in the Hebraic root scriptures goes on to read, uh, It is Yahweh making this covenant. And what covenant is that? Well, let's read. It says, The following message came to Jeremiah from Yahweh in the tenth year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is also the, the tenth year of the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now we'll get into uh, verse 2 here and go on. Verse 2 says, verse 2 says here, uh, Jer uh, Jerusalem was under siege from the Babylonian army, and Jeremiah was imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace. King Zedekiah had put him there asking why he kept giving this prophecy. This is what Yahweh says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will take it. King Zedekiah uh, will be captured by the Babylonians and taken to meet the king of Babylon face to face. He will take Zedekiah to Babylon, and I will deal with him there, says Yahweh. If you fight against the Babylonians, you will never succeed. So that was... Uh, uh, the note or, or where we're at here. And, and so they put Jeremiah in jail because of this. Now uh, from verses 6 to 17, uh, I'm going to read the note here. That's a prelude to what we're going about to read here. And it basically says, trust doesn't come easy. It wasn't easy for Jeremiah to publicly buy land uh, already captured by the enemy, but he trusted Yahweh. It wasn't easy for David to believe that he would become king even after he was anointed but he trusted Yahweh. It wasn't easy for Moses to believe that he and his people would escape Egypt, even after Yahweh spoke to him from the burning bush, but he trusted Yahweh. It isn't easy for us to believe that Yahweh uh, can uh, fulfill his impossible promises either, but we must trust in him. Yahweh who who worked in the levels of our biblical uh, heroes, will work in our lives too, if we let him. And so a lot of it comes down to trust, trusting in him and, and having faith. That's where faith uh, comes into play here. So in reading this, let's read uh, verses 6 uh, and on here. So it says in verse 6, At that time Yahweh sent a messenger, and he said, your cousin Hanamil, son of Shalom, will come to you and say, Buy my field in Anarath. By law, you have the right to buy it before it is offered to anyone else. Then just as Yahweh has said he would, my cousin Hamil came and visited me in the prison and said, 
please buy my field in uh, Anareth in the land of Benjamin. By law, you have the right to buy it before it's offered to anyone else. So buy it for yourself. Then I knew the message I heard was from Yahweh. So I bought the field at Antharath, paying Hamel 17 pieces of silver for it. Now that was verse 9. Let's just go back to verse 7 for a second here. Uh, in the Hebraic root scriptures where it says, uh, Behold, Hamel, the son of Shamel, your uncle, shall come to you saying by my field. The note here says, uh, in the Hebraic root scriptures, this was uh, this was Jeremiah's hometown, and he was the nearest kingsman redeemer. Yahweh was using this as a sign to show that his word, that Israel would return, uh, the return was for sure. Symbolically, the Messiah is the kingsman redeemer and will return to the land all the tribes of Israel and uh, at his return. Hallelujah. Praise Yah, praise Yah. Great, great note there. It also says in verse 9, the field was worthless at this time since the Babylonians had already taken it captive this area and showed Jeremiah's great faith in Yahweh. So that was uh, that was uh, verse 9. Now verse 10 says, I signed and sealed the deed of purchase before witnesses, weighed out the silver and paid them, or paid them. So and it, and it says here, this is a normal mode of making a transaction in that day. The scale would have weighed measures on the side against the, uh, against the silver uh, on the other side. Some dishonest people would have false weighted measures to gain more silver than what was legally agreed upon. But this is how they did things in those days when, when they made uh, these changes and so on. So verse uh, 11, then I took a scale deed and an unscaled copy of the deed, which contained the terms and conditions of the purchase. And I handed them to Baruch, son of Nura, and grandson of uh, Mishka. I did all this in the presence of my cousin Hananel, the witness who had signed the deed, and all the men of Judah who were there uh, in the courtyard of the guardhouse. So uh, verse 13. And then I said to Baruch, as they all listened, this is what Yahweh of heaven's armies, the Elohim of Israel says, take both the scale deed and the unsealed copy and put them into a pottery jar to preserve them for a long time. For this is what Yahweh of heaven's armies, the Elohim of Israel says, someday people will get own property here in this land and you will buy and sell houses and vineyards and fields. So uh, he's, he's talking about the, 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 the return of Israel to this land. The note here says, uh, in, in verse 13, it says, Baruch means blessed, and he was a faithful secretary and friend of Jeremiah. So that, that's uh, who we're looking at here. Now, let's continue and read uh, verses 16. Then after I had given the papers to Baruch, I prayed to Yahweh. O sovereign Elohim, you made the heavens and the earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show unfailing love to thousands, but you also bring the consequences of one generation's sin upon the next. You are the great and powerful Elohim, the Elohim of, of heaven's armies. You have all wisdom and do great and mighty miracles. You see the con conduct of people and you give them what they deserve. You perform miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Things still remembered to this day. And you have continued to do great miracles in Israel and all around the world. You have made your name famous to this day. And... It says here in, uh, in, in these notes here, after Jeremiah bought the field, he began to wonder if such a move was wise. He sought relief uh, in prayer from his nagging doubts. In this prayer, Jeremiah affirmed that Yahweh is the creator of heaven and earth and the wise judge who is aware of our conduct, her conduct and our redeemer who has great power. Yahweh loves us and sees our situation Whenever we doubt Yahweh's wisdom or wonder if it is practical to obey him, 
we can review what we already know about him. Such thoughts and prayers will quiet our doubts and calm our fears. Amen. Amen. So that's uh, uh, some of the notes here up to uh, verse 20. Uh, 20 uh, up to the verse uh, 20. So now we're going to get to verse 21 next. Uh, so we see here Jeremiah doing what he's taught to do. And what we should be doing is taking it to Yahweh and seeing what Yahweh has to say about the situation always. So uh, next we look at uh, verse 21. You brought Israel out of Egypt with mighty signs and wonders, with your strong hand and powerful arm, and with overwhelming terror. You gave the people of Israel this land that you had promised their ancestors long before, a land full, full with milk and honey. Our ancestors came and conquered it and lived in it, but they refused to obey you or follow your word. They had not done anything you commanded. That is why you have sent this terrible disaster that upon them. And verse uh, 24. It says, see how the sage ramps, uh, the siege ramps have been built against the city walls through war, famine, and disease. This city will be handed over to the Babylonians who conquer it. Everything has happened just as you have said. And in a one new man Bible in this verse, uh, 24, it says, these are the ramps built against the outside of the city wall by the invading army. And going back to verse 18 in the One Newman Bible, it says, uh, the children are not charged with the sins of the fathers, but the sins result, uh, result causes uh, pain even uh, when the sin is forgiven. Children are not punished for their father's sins. Uh, but, but as we see, the sins are still on the children because the consequences of the sin can run down the family line. Uh, so that's an excellent note there. So uh, we'll continue here with verse uh, well, 25. And, and the sovereign Elohim who have told you to buy the field, paying good money for it before these witnesses, even though the city will soon be handed over to the Babylonians. Well, it says here in, uh, well, that's verse 35. So let's see. Okay. So continuing, it says, It says, uh, a prediction of Jerusalem's fall, verse 26. Then this measure came to Jeremiah from Yahweh. I am the Elohim. I am the Elohim of all the people of the world. And anything is, is anything too hard for me? Therefore, this is what Yahweh says. I will hand this city over to the Babylonians and to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonian. Uh, and he will capture it. The Babylonians outside the walls will come in and set fire to the city, and they will burn down all the houses where the people provoke my anger, from burning incense to Baal and root on the rooftops and pouring out liquid offerings to other gods. And that's gods with a, with a lowercase g. It says uh, in verse 30, Israel and Judah have done nothing wrong, but Israel and Judah have done nothing but wrong. Since their early days, they have inf inf infuriated me with all their evil deeds, says Yahweh. From the time this city was built until now, it has done nothing but anger me. So I am determined to get rid of it. The sins of Israel and Judah, the sins of the people of Jerusalem, the kings and the officials, the priests and the prophets have stirred up my anger. My people have turned their backs on me and have refused to return, even though I diligently taught them. They would not receive instruction or obey. They have set up their abominable idols right in front of my own temple, defiling it. They have built pagan shrines to Baal and the valley of ben Hanenim, And there they sacrificed their sons and daughters to Moloch. I never commanded such horrible deed. It never crossed my mind to command such a horrible deed. What an incredible evil caused Judah to sin so greatly. And uh, this is... Uh, the, the when the metal hits the road, so to say, and this is the the high point of the the destruction that's coming and why, and and Yah's not holding back anything here. It says here in the note, uh, these pagan shrines were, were were where the most important and 
grotesque part of Moloch worship took place. Children were offered in sacrifice uh, to pay uh, to this pagan god, and that pagan god, uh, Moloch, they were offered in sacrifice. And uh, this is uh, uh, definitely something that is creating uh, a, 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 a big problem. And Yahweh was not happy with this at all. Uh, and it says here in verse 36, uh, a promise to restoration. So now here Jeremiah is uh, is is not going back on his word, but he's promising this, this uh, restoration. Says, now I want to say something more about this city. You have been saying if we fall to the king of Babylon through war, famine, and disease, but this is what Yahweh, the Elohim, the Elohim of Israel says. Before we get that, let's look at this note here. It says, Yahweh uses his power to accomplish his purposes through his people. Yahweh doesn't give power to be uh, all you want to be, but he gives power to be all he wants you to be. The people of Israel had to learn that trusting Yahweh meant radically relining their purposes and desires with his. Yahweh gave them one heart toward him. We must develop such singleness of heart and action to love Yahweh above anything else. Amen. Amen. And uh, so as we uh, look here, and let's continue reading here. It says, this is what Yahweh says, verse 37. I will certainly bring my people back again from all the countries where I will scatter them from in my fury. I will bring them back to this very city and let them live in peace and safety. They will be my people and I will be their Elohim. And I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here, and I will make them an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me, and they will never leave me. I will find joy in doing good for them, and I will faithfully and wholeheartedly uh, replant them in this land. Praise Yah. He does not give up, and he tells us not to give up hope either. Never give up hope. Is, uh, is what he calls us to do. Now, uh, we just read uh, up to 42, but in 39, when it said, and I will give them one heart and one purpose, uh, it says here in the Aramaic translation of the idiom, it says, in Jeremiah, one heart, they'll give you one heart. It means one mind and one accord. So that's what Yah was getting at in 39. So let's go back to 42 and finish off this chapter. It says, this is what Yahweh says. Just as I have brought all the calamities on them, so I will do all the good I have promised them. Fields will again be brought and sold in this land about which you now say. It has been ravaged by the Babylonians, a desolate land where people and animals have all disappeared. Yes, fields will once again be bought and sold, deed signed and sealed as and witnessed in the land of Benjamin and here in Jerusalem, in the towns of Judah and the country hills, in the country, in the foothills of Judah, and in the Negev too, for some day I will restore prosperity to them. I, Yahweh, have spoken. I, Yahweh, have spoken. And finally, in verse 44, it says, the hill country in the western, uh, is in western Palestine. This Negev is the southern part of Judah. So it goes on and it, and it proclaims or shows the particular areas here. And all translations have it. In uh, the Hebraic root scripture says, uh, the, the Shephala means lowland and was between Jerusalem and what is today the cross land of, the te of Tel Aviv. The coast was lower than Shephaham, but equating is directed from Jerusalem, the center of the earth. And then in the One New Man Bible, it says, uh, return the captivity means to end the captivity, to come home uh, free people. Amen. And that's what we're looking for one day. That's what's going to happen. The return of the people of Israel. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. We're going to clo close off today with the ironic benediction in Numbers 624 to 26. Eureka, Yahweh, Vivishma Rikaka. Yo er Yahweh Panana Alaka Vikonika 
Yossi Yahweh, Panana, Alaka, Yasem, Aka, Shalom. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his contents upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this and uh, put your comments and questions below the video. Until then, have a blessed day and shalom, shalom.